The next section is BGP Configuration. Select the section you are interested in viewing now. The basic BGP configuration we will build contains an eBGP configuration and an iBGP configuration. We will build the external BGP, eBGP configuration between R1 and R2 that are in two different autonomous systems. We will then build an internal BGP, iBGP configuration between R1 and R3 that are in the same autonomous system. Here's the diagram for the switches we are about to configure for eBGP. In this beginning section, we will build a basic eBGP configuration on each switch. To do this, we will configure the switch, its interfaces, and BGP. We will name each switch R1 and R2. Create a common VLAN, VISP. Create a loopback VLAN that only each switch can access. Create BGP router IDs for each switch and identify the other switch as the BGP neighbor. Let's get started by configuring switch R1 for eBGP operation. Click on R1 to bring up the console window. Each switch needs basic configuration. Let's name the switch first to keep things straight. Let's delete the default VLAN ports. Now we'll create the VLANs for router 1. First, VISP, as eBGP normally connects to an ISP, and R1 underscore VLAN underscore LB, the VLAN on the loopback interface. And we'll assign the IP addresses to each VLAN as shown in the configuration diagram. Let's take a look at what we've created. You can see VISP and R1 underscore VLAN LB with the correct IP addresses assigned. Now let's add ports to the VLANs we just created. And we'll enable the ports in the loopback interface. Let's now assign the correct autonomous system and router ID numbers for BGP. Each switch must be assigned the correct autonomous system number for its location. The router ID is the access point to the switch that is a direct link from its neighbor's switch. Now take a look at the BGP configuration. You can see the router ID and the autonomous system number assigned to R1. Now we'll create a neighbor relationship. Create a BGP neighbor relationship with the router to which you wish to share and pass routing information. The router must be directly connected on the same network. Let's see who are our neighbors. Our current BGP neighbor is an external disabled peer, 10.10.20.2 in AS200. Notice that we do not have any BGP state yet. Now we'll start the IP forwarding and BGP processes before configuring the next switch. Now you'll practice by configuring the second switch, R2, for eBGP operation. Click on R2 to bring up the console window. Since each switch needs basic configuration, let's name this switch to keep things straight. Now delete the default VLAN ports. Now we'll create the VLANs for router 2. VISP, as eBGP normally connects to an ISP, and R2 underscore VLAN underscore LB, the VLAN on the loopback interface we will use to simulate other networks behind this router. and now assign the IP addresses to each VLAN as shown in the configuration diagram.
Let's take a look at what we've created. You can see VISP and R2 underscore VLAN underscore LB with the correct IP addresses assigned, but no ports yet. Now let's add ports to the VLANs we just created. and enable the ports in the loopback interface. Now let's assign the correct autonomous system and router ID numbers for BGP. Now take a look at the BGP configuration. You can see the correct autonomous system number and router ID assigned for this switch. Now we'll create a BGP neighbor relationship with R1. Let's see who are our neighbors. We now see Router 1 with its correct information as our neighbor, and no BGP state yet. Now let's start the IP forwarding and BGP processes on this switch. Now we'll type the command to look at the existing routes on each switch. First on R1. On R1 we see that it only has its own routes. Now you type the command to see the existing routes on R2. On R2 we see that it also only has its own routes. 